I'm going to show you a head real quick. Um, common problem with these multi zones in heat mode where uh, you'll get like an upstairs bedroom head. Even though it's reached set point, it still continues to kind of be adding heat to the room. And I, we've seen them where they get all the way into the 80s. Um, and this is this is a head that reached its set point hours ago, but it's connected to a four zone system. And my living room head is still cranking. I got that one set really high. So the living room's still cranking. Uh, this one is kind of supposed to be in standby. And the fan, by default, keeps continuously running. I've set this one up. I've pre I've pre programmed it so the fan cycles off but as we can see with this heat gun um, even though it's at set point and it's done calling for heat it's still got all this residual heat in the coil so if the fan were going to keep running there even if the fan was just at that minimum um, speed this room especially if it's a small upstairs bedroom it's just going to keep uh, getting warmer in here. So we've programmed this one um, so that the fan cycles off. And still, I mean, there's a little heat in there, but if the fan's off. It's not going to really be adding too much more to this little room and making it too hot up here. I've got a quick video here on how to reprogram a mini split head, of specifically a Senville Aura head to have the fan cycle off once the set point temperature is reached. Uh, by default, the manufacturer has it set up where the fan just continuously runs. Um, there's a number of reasons for that. So once the set point's reached, the fan never stops. It just coasts down to a very low speed. Um, that's better for efficiency, um, more uniform room temperature, and just like less cycling of the fan because typically with the fan coming on and off, starting, stopping, that's uses more power than if it just coasted down really low. So by default, uh, we hope that this mode works, but there's sometimes situations where it's better if the fan is reprogrammed or the head is reprogrammed. So the fan will cycle off and that's usually on a multi zone and it's usually in heat mode that they have problems. Um, I found a few where a multi-zone, like a three-zone, one head in the living room uh, was running pretty hard, and then there was another two heads off the system upstairs and some small bedrooms. So played around with it, but with one head running in the system, um, there's always like a little residual leak by heat, I took a heat gun to one of the heads upstairs, and even though it stopped calling for heat, just with that fan running a little bit, um, it was still transferring some of that heat into the room, and then it would overshoot, and the room would get too hot. So the only solution I found for stuff like that is to reprogram those heads, or at least the ones that were having problems, so that the fan will cycle off. And again, this is usually in heat mode and it's uh, on a multi-zone. The single zones really don't matter so much because they have a little bit better uh, control of that cycling on and off. So we'll get into a, a how-to on how to reprogram this and involves cycling the main breaker or power supply on and off a few times, which is pretty annoying, especially if your electric panels uh, three floors down from the head you're trying to reprogram because you cycle the power on and off, and you only have like a minute to get into this programming menu once the power has been turned on. So we'll we'll start with that. I'll show you what I'm doing on the remote here. And uh, this one's going to be easier because it's in my basement and my breaker panel's right behind me. So I'll be able to switch it pretty quickly and get back to making this video. But... Uh, another thing is if you have a surge protector tied into the outdoor disconnect or power supply, you'll have a time delay, which is handier for this method because uh, you can go to the panel on and off, and then you'll have like five minutes before 
before the head gets power to it to get into that menu. But if you don't and it's far away, it might be easier with uh, somebody else helping. So I'm going to go um, turn the main breaker off and then back on, and you'll see it flash a display once the head initially gets its power. And that's um, that just alerts you that the, the head has power now. And once we see that happen, that's when we get into this um, procedure. So you can pause the video here if you want. I have a write-up on these steps. But this is how to get the program. So the fan was programmed to cycle off. So I'm going to go swap the breaker off and on. Okay, I'm going to go cycle the breaker off and then back on. I think you're supposed to keep it off for at least five minutes and then put the power back on the breaker. And then you'll see on the head it's going to display like a 888 and beep. And that's how you know it's initially got its power. And now we have one minute to get into the programming menu and make those changes. So you got to kind of do it to each head. Unfortunately, if you have a bunch of heads, you get to do this process like one at a time, basically. So, Okay, I don't know if you saw it, but it just flashed that little 888, and that means um, we're ready. We've got a minute. Power it on, and then right back off real quick. And now we're going to hold the power and the fan button together, power and fan, for like seven seconds while it's pointed at the unit. Okay, now uh, at like an NA is displayed on the head. Once that's displayed, scroll up until you see R2 displayed on the head. Now hold the power button for two seconds. And now you got a CH displayed on the remote. Scroll up until you hit one, okay. Okay, so I, I scrolled up, it hit one, and then the head displayed real quick like a CO or something. That means it's uh, accepted the new signal. So now I'm gonna go breaker power off again for a few minutes and then back on. So now the, the breaker's off, and um, so you get to basically do the breaker twice for each head, which is annoying, but once this is in, it should be good. Um, and the, it says you're supposed to leave the power off again for five minutes again. i would just leave it off for like 30 seconds or so and uh, see if it's accepted that new signal. All right. Okay, power's back on. I'm going to turn this unit on again. And again, um, if this was a three zone or a four zone or five zone, you got to do this to each head that you want to um, have that new programming in. So we're at heat mode. It's pretty cold in here. I'd say it's 60 degrees, so... Again, keep that fan in auto. It's in follow me mode right now. I'll 
pause this video and come back, but we'll just confirm once that um, the room is at set point temperature that that fan turns off. And that might take a while, especially if you just reprogrammed it. So it might take like a good 20 minutes the first time to to see and verify that those fans are in fact turning off once set point is reached. And then it'll just kind of sit there and wait. While we're waiting for that, I've got a modest set point in there of like 64. So hopefully once it's met, we'll see that the fans turning off. I can hear it going still, but I'll flash this real quick. This is the, uh, the method to revert it back the programming to have the fan continuously running, which is the default, um, how they're set up from the factory. And, um, if you cared, you'd, you'd put that back into that mode for summer when you got it in AC mode. Cause it is better to have the fan continuously running, especially in cooling mode. Cause when it, when it cycles on an awful lot, uh, it's not great for uh, the fan in terms of it getting kind of skanky with mildew and stinky smells. It's better to leave that fan running continuously because the fan wheel is able to dry out better. So this is really only recommended um, in heat mode when you're having problems with an overshooting temperature, typically in a small bedroom. So as we can see, the fan's still running, but uh, once it stops, once it's reached set point, I'll go pan up in there to show you that it's still on, but the fan is not running and just in sort of a standby. As we can see here, we've got the set point in the room temperature. It's actually above the set point by a few degrees. Yeah, and don't, don't expect it to turn off like immediately as soon as it hits that number. They always take a while, give it 20 minutes. It's sometimes they overshoot a few degrees by design. But as you can see, the unit's on right now and it's ready to heat again uh, if I get down below set point. But that fan is in fact off and it's just idling by waiting. So that's what it looks like once the fan's reprogrammed in normal mode. Even once set point was reached, that fan's still gonna be still going to be spinning at a minimum speed.